Uh, whatever. It's broken up. What do you expect? What is up, everyone? My name is Jack Cross from NASCAR on MDK. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Lines. Today, we're going to go over the 2019 Pocono 400 that just wrapped up just a few minutes ago at the time I'm recording this. And Kyle Busch scores his 55th career victory, tying Rusty Wallace for ninth on the all-time win list, and scores his fourth win of the season. The race started out very wet. Uh, early in the morning, uh, it was sprinkling all over the racetrack, so NASCAR implemented a competition caution 20 laps into the event. There were two drivers going to the rear of the field, the 52 car of JJ Yaley, who spun uh, during qualifying yesterday for adjustments, and the 95 car of Matt Benedetto due to an engine change. The race started out with William Byron in the Hendrick Chevrolet, who scored his second straight pole in two weeks. Uh, he won the pole, and the last of him was Kyle Busch, and William Byron got out to a pretty decent decent lead um, at the start of this race which was kind of surprising because I expected Kyle Busch to just get by him right away that's why I had him winning stage one I expected him to just pass uh, William Byron at the start of the race but no Byron kept himself to a decent lead and in fact just a couple laps later Eric Jones would then pass Kyle Busch for second and uh, Byron would then build a 1.3 second lead ahead of Eric Jones by lap six. Pit strategy was one of the one of if not really the most important thing that took place throughout the entire race and really the only thing that made it interesting for example with one lap to go before the competition caution kevin harvick decided to pit for tires only because according to nascar if there's a competition caution you cannot add fuel to your car before the caution so uh, the only thing that harvick and his team could do was uh, give him four fresh tires and then when the caution came out he took fuel and Harvick came out ninth when everyone came on pit road and did their thing. So he had a net gain of two. He came on to pit road on uh, uh, in 11th place, came out 23rd or something, but then came back up to ninth. So overall, it was a good strategy by Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childress. During that competition caution, however, Byron led the way uh, and Larson won the battle off of pit road with Brad Kozlowski, Jimmy Johnson, and Daniel Suarez, the top four. Restart would then take place on lap 24 with Kyle Larson being the leader, but the first real caution of the day would take place on lap 30 when uh, Paul Menard gets into the back end of Austin Dillon in turn three, spins Dillon, and Dillon hits the outside wall, making pretty good contact with that safer bear to bring out the first real caution, but overall the second caution of the day. Restart then took place on lap 33 with Kyle Larson leading the way and William Byron, who was around the fifth place, I want to say, he had a great start, jumped his way up into the second spot. But that's when pit strategy started to take place again. With two laps to go before stage one concluded, it was Kyle Busch, uh, Clint Boyer, Eric Jones, Denny Hamlin, and Chase Elliott, I believe. Those drivers came onto Vero, gave up their spots in order to get an advantage once stage two started. Uh, however, at the front, it was Kyle Larson who won stage one. That was the first time he won a stage this season since Atlanta, the second race of the season, with William Byron in second and Brad Kozlowski in third. Now, when stage two started, I talked about the original drivers that stayed out on pit road, like Hamlin, uh, um, Eric Jones, I think it was, Chase Ellick, Kyle Busch, those drivers stayed out obviously because they pitted earlier. However, two drivers also stayed out that didn't pit with the original group, and that was Martrix Jr. and Brad Keselowski. And then coming to the restart on lap 55, Kyle Busch with those fresh tires uh, gets a run on Keselowski and Trix who are racing side by side. Busch makes a three wide, goes by them into the tunnel turn, and takes the lead off of turn two. However, then another caution would come out seven laps later. Um, Matt Benedetto gets loose coming off of turn two and spun around to bring the third caution of the day. Restart then takes place with 40 laps to go uh, with Kyle Busch as a race leader. And on that same lap heading into the tunnel turn, Matt Tiff gets loose when his car went underneath the apron and hit those bumps. Gets loose off of turn two, spins around to bring out the fourth caution of the day. And like I said earlier on, really fuel strategy or pit strategy was really what took place throughout the entire race. Uh, Keselowski and Truex were on different strategies. Bush and Hamlin were on different strategies. Just different groups of drivers were on different strategies and it really made the race somewhat interesting. Uh, the overall on-track product was not good, but really the pit strategy is what sort of saved this race in my opinion for being an outright just bore fest. 35 laps to go, Kyle Busch takes the lead. However, his teammate, Martrix Jr., who came onto pit road, he dropped like a rock. He started 16th and then fell back to 23rd. So uh, he talked about how his car was handling not good in traffic and it, his, he was awful when he was around race cars. He just could not go. 
Four laps later, the 32 car of Corey LaJoy, who had a really good run at Charlotte, finishing 12th last week, blew a right rear tire and slammed the outside wall. Pretty good contact with that outside wall in turn two to bring out the fifth caution of the day. Then when the restart came out uh, with 29 laps to go, it was Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer. Boyer actually got a better start than Kyle Busch on the inside and was able to pass Kyle Busch off of turn number one. But with 26 laps to go, Kyle Busch would then eventually get back to Kyle, uh, Clint Boyer and pass him for the lead. Now during the commercial break, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Uh, cut a right rear tire. But the fun thing is that uh, one lap later, uh, with 18 laps to go in stage one, David Reagan also blows a right rear tire. It's weird. We're seeing lately the past two races has been right either right side issues right front or right rear tire problems we saw it at charlotte with the toyota gang and now we're seeing again uh with the four group at pocono very weird to say the least what's been going on these past two races in terms of tire issues compared to the type of cars that are being affected pit road begins with nine laps to go and it started with denny hamlin and martin trix jr now the difference between this is that hamlin came in for pit stop however Truex came in saying on the radio that his engine was blowing up and indeed it was just one or two laps later the camera cuts back to Martrix Jr. being pushed back into the garage and he would DNF in this event. Tough break for Martrix Jr. He did have a really good car he just needed to get out of traffic. He was stuck in traffic for the majority of the day and uh, yeah ultimately he ended with a DNF I believe in the 37th or 38th spot. After all the pit cycles went through Kyle Larson would then regain the lead with four laps to go and Kyle Larson would then win stage two. Joe Logano in second and William Byron the pole sitter in third place. Restart takes place with 56 laps to go. Kyle Busch was on the restart with Kevin Harvick. Uh, Denny Hamlin gave Kyle Busch a really good uh, push ending turns one and two or turn one I should say that gave uh, Kyle Busch a race lead but Harvick was still hanging strong on his left rear corner panel made him go side by side but Bush was just so much better than Harvick and was able to clear him by the tunnel turn. Nothing would then happen. Pit stop started taking place, but a really key moment with 37 laps to go, the leaders of Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick came onto pit road and two drivers, both of them had very, uh, just not right stops. Kyle Busch had a slow pit stop on the left side of his car when he was changing for left tires. He had a very slow pit stop on that portion of it. Kevin Harvick, took to right side tires to get ahead of Kyle Busch. However, he would be busted for an uncontrolled tire. That's right, He, if he did not get that uncontrolled tire, he would have been the race leader. But because of that penalty, Harvick had to come onto pit road to serve his pass through penalty. And it didn't just end after that. Just a couple laps later, Jamie Little reported that Kevin Harvick was suffering something with the steering box, something was wrong with the steering box. Um, and then Harvick and his team opened up the hood and they uh, uh, came to the conclusion that it was a, a cracked steering box, which I have no idea what that means, but that was the issue with Kevin Harvick. And I believe he finished 23rd, the last driver on the lead lap. So it went from a good day to a bad day to a worse day for Kevin Harvick. And he still has not won a race this season. In fact, I think they just showed a stat in the first 13 races or so, Harvick won five races last year and led, I think, nearly 800 laps. This year, he has won zero races and led less than 300. So a very, just, just a, a complete change in years between 2018, 2019 for Kevin Harvick and really the whole Stuart Haas team. Well, some drivers were trying to stay out on the racetrack and hoping for a caution like Daniel Suarez, William Byron, and Daniel Hemrick, but that was not meant to be. They would all have to come out on pit road and with 20 laps to go, Kyle Busch would then regain the lead from Daniel Hemrick. However, 14 laps to go, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. blows another right front tire or blows a tire in turn two, makes huge contact with the outside wall, but that brings out the caution with 14 laps remaining. Now, all the drivers that came on the pit road, I forgot who it was specifically, I believe it was Byron and someone else, I'm not sure who it was, but all the drivers that came on the pit road uh, started 12th on back, so it really backfired for them. Drivers like uh, Hamlin, Chase Elliott, and Daniel Suarez did a fake pit. They looked like they were gonna pit road, but then they faked out. Uh, Kirk Busch also did that method to try and gain more track position. Restart would then take place with nine laps to go with Kyle Busch as a race leader. Kyle Larson just got a heck of a restart. In fact, really this whole race, he was just the man on restarts. He would gain the most positions on restarts or one or two laps into a restart. However, this time by, it did not work in his favor. He got a good start, was up into fifth place, I wanna say. However, coming off of turn one, he slid up in front of Clint Boyer and then Boyer just turns Larson hard into the outside. Well, did not bring out a caution, but Larson did have to come on to pit road. And I think he'd end up, I think 22nd or 23rd, I'm not, I'm not sure, but he finished in the mid 20s 
at the end of the day. So really, it was a tough one for Kyle Larson because he had a really good car, swept both of the stages, and this is the third time in Larson's career that he has won both stages but has not gone to victory lane. And that was really all that would happen. Uh, Kyle Busch would then end up winning the Pocono 400 for his fourth win of the season and his 55th career win, tying him with Rusty Wallace on ninth on NASCAR's all-time win list. And uh, I told you, I picked Kyle Busch to win and he won. So y'all need to listen to me more, all right? Now, overall, this race, like I said, if it wasn't for just a pit strategy, this would, would have been an absolute bore fest. Uh, I mean, I give this race just like a three or four out of 10. I mean, this was just really not good of a race and it's not surprising I mean, it is Pocono but also I talked about in my previous show that I was kind of expecting a race like this because of this package and it's low horsepower there is little to no throttle response so if you just get out of the gas just a tiny bit you lose so much momentum it's mental and it just makes it even, even that much harder to keep up because now it's like if you want to catch up to a driver you have to go almost full throttle nearly the entire way through and if you just let up for just a bit all your momentum gone. Uh, so I was expecting something like that. One thing I was not expecting was restarts. The restarts was very tame. I was very surprised by that. Uh, from what we saw at tracks like Phoenix, Charlotte, uh, Kansas, I expected the restarts to just be all over the place, but no. Surprisingly, it was very calm, very calm race. Uh, very calm, very boring race, to say at least. Uh, this just shows that Pocono should not have two races, and hopefully by 2021, Pocono axes one race from the schedule but uh yeah that's really all i have to say thank you so much for watching the nascar mdk inside the lines uh post race show i will have a full highlights video from pocono on tuesday so make sure you guys look out for that because i did i left a lot of parts in this episode uh four page of notes to go by um yeah actually i took four pages of notes uh to go by to get everything ready i recorded the race so that i can get uh, people that didn't bother want to watch the entire race, but just want to see the highlights There was more stuff that went on, but I just talked about the important things in this video So if you guys want to check out the full highlights to make sure to tune in on Tuesday for the race recap on Monday I will have an inside lines video talking about all the stories that took place throughout the weekend If you haven't seen my pre-race show, I'm not doing any more of news at the tracks I will move that to a Monday version of inside lines So uh, yeah, make sure you guys look out for those two videos later in the week uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching the NASCAR on MDK Inside the Lines post race show. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. Tell me what you guys thought of this race. I'm pretty sure I know what the general population will be, but still would like to hear it out. I will be posting a poll later on so that I can put it into the uh, Inside the Lines video on Monday. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. My name is Jake Cross from NASCAR on MDK, and I'll see you guys in the next video.